Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers suspect descriptions, pointing firearms, and professionalism, and is brought to us by azcentral.com and the Arizona Republic's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On August 29th, 2020, Hawthorne Suites Hotel Manager Sean Hoover called the non-emergency police line in Tempe, Arizona to request the two individuals who were suspected of conducting illegal activities be removed from the property. After making the call, Mr. Hoover and his employee, Trevanye Kumpian, encountered a man and woman smoking in a stairwell with the exit door propped open. When Mr. Hoover asked them to leave, the female exited the premises, but the male suspect allegedly pulled out a gun. Mr. Hoover then told the man to put away the gun and leave, and the man complied. Shortly after this incident occurred, Officer Ronald Kurzaya of the Tempe Police Department responded to the original call and approached Mr. Hoover in the hotel lobby. The interaction that followed was captured on Officer Kurzaya's body camera. Hey, sir, how we doing? We got a good hold on to this. Some guy just pulled a gun out on us. I've got a 417 George here. I'm going to need some additional units. Manager's advising a male subject here just pulled a firearm on him. Where is he now? White male, black male, what do we got? Is he a white male, a black male? Come on! White male, uh, he's going to be wearing a. Uh, Black shirt, tan pants. He's going to be coming down the staircase and exit off that door right there. Tempor. Um, he's probably going to be poking out on the west exit. He's walking out now. Get inside now. Get the out. Forty-one. I'm going to hold on that exit. Responding units, if you're coming up price, I want you to come in that entrance and hold. Put your hands up! One at gunpoint. Step out! I work here. You work here? I was kicking the door closed, man. Okay, put, turn around. I work here. That's fine. On, man. You don't Step this way. Hey, listen up. to me! Listen! Okay? I, got my hand I am responding to somebody with a firearm who matches your description. Do you understand that? Despite the fact that the suspect was described as a white man wearing a black shirt and tan pants, Officer Kurzaya points his firearm at Mr. Kumpian, a black male in a white shirt and dark pants, and claims he is looking for an individual with a firearm who matches Mr. Kumpian's description. Under the so-called mere presence doctrine established by the Supreme Court in the 1979 case of Ybarra v. Illinois, an individual's mere presence, or so-called mere propinquity, to criminal activity activity alone does not support probable cause to search or arrest that individual. However, in the 1999 case of U.S. v. Buckner, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Arizona, held that while, quote, the mere presence doctrine has logical application where the facts and circumstances do not support an inference that the individual is connected to the proximate criminal activity, in the case at hand, where the defendant was a passenger in a car that was procured under suspicious circumstances and loaded with a commercial quantity of marijuana, quote, a prudent and experienced police officer might reasonably suspect that the passenger is involved in drug smuggling. Courts have also found that reasonable suspicion may exist even when an individual's appearance does not entirely match the description of a suspect. For instance, in the 1995 case of Alexander v. County of Los Angeles, the Ninth Circuit upheld the detention of two men despite discrepancies between the description of the suspects and the individual's appearance, including the fact that one suspect was older and not as heavy as described and did not have a gold tooth. The court justified its decision, which it referred to as a so-called close question, by arguing that the individuals matched some aspects of the description because they were driving a similar car, and one of the men was wearing a blue and white striped shirt and had a mustache. In this situation, Mr. Kumpian did not in any way match Mr. Hoover's description of the suspect, as he was the wrong race and wearing opposite colored clothing to the description. And for this reason alone, Mr. Kumpian would have a strong argument that Officer Kurzaya did not have the reasonable suspicion necessary necessary to detain him. However, in the 2022 case of United States v. Arteaga, the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of California, which is in the Ninth Circuit, held that officers had reasonable suspicion to detain a Hispanic man who was, quote, within an arm's length of a BMW vehicle that was allegedly involved in a road rage shooting, despite the fact that the suspect was described as black. The court reasoned that, quote, the officers would have been justified in detaining anyone who appeared to be connected to the BMW, and that even if the defendant 
defendant's race lessened the likelihood that he was the shooter, quote, it did not remove the possibility that he was still involved in the road rage incident. Therefore, while it is certainly possible that a court could determine that Officer Kerziah did not have reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Kumpian because he clearly did not meet the description of the suspect, it is also conceivable that a court would conclude that Officer Kerziah was within his authority to detain Mr. Kumpian because he exited the door where Mr. Hoover informed Mr. Kerziah that the suspect was headed and, accordingly, may have been involved with the suspect. Hey, come here. I got my hands up, man. Stay Take back. the gun off. For real, I got my hands up. Take Where's your idea? No, you don't get to tell me what to do. I Where's your idea? Take the gun off me, man. No. Where your supervisor at? You gonna shoot me? I'm no. Be another person on the news? Get on your knees. I didn't do nothing Shut to Shut the f*** with that shit on your knees. I, I didn't do nothing to you. Remember this. I need your badge number and your name. You'll get everything you need. Yeah, put need put everything on the ground. I didn't do nothing to you. I got my hands up and I work here. Go call the manager. 41, where are my other units at? Just hang tight, okay? Okay, but this ain't... I'm t I work here. All you gotta do is call the manager and take the... Who's your off. manager? Stop Sean telling me Hoover. what to do. Sean Hoover, take okay, the... Okay, what is your name? Trey. 41, can we get somebody to get the complainant on the line and find out if there's an employee here by the name of Trey? You don't gotta hold no gun. My hands are up. I'm not a threat to you. Are you a cop? I'm not a threat to you. Are you a cop? I'm not a threat to you. You don't tell me what a, threat, a threat to threat me to is. You, you don't yeah. know. Just because you're a cop don't mean you can hold a gun at somebody whenever you get good and damn ready. I put my hands up and I'm when not... When I'm responding to somebody with a firearm, I can do what I need to to stay up. safe and go home to my family. Do you understand that? My hands are up. Mr. Kumpian tells Officer Kerziah that he can't point a gun at him just because he's a cop. And Officer Kerziah replies that when he's responding to a call involving a firearm, he can, quote, do what he needs to to stay safe. According to the Tempe Police Department, Order 12.101, which includes the use of force policy for the department, pointing a firearm at an individual is recognized as a type of force, referred to in the policy as a so-called show of force. In general, the policy states that officers, quote, may use force which is objectively reasonable based upon the facts and circumstances known, or reasonably believed, to exist at the time of the incident, and directs that, quote, employees will not use more force than is objectively reasonable to accomplish their lawful purpose. The policy also requires officers to consider the three factors for assessing whether force is excessive that are outlined in the 1989 Supreme Court case of Graham v. Connor, which include the severity of the crime, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the law enforcement officer or others, and whether the suspect is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Based on these factors, courts have held that pointing a firearm at an individual can constitute excessive force in some situations, even if no physical contact is made. For instance, in the 2000 case of Robinson v. Solano County, the Ninth Circuit noted that, quote, in cases involving investigatory or Terry stops, we have consistently applied the principle that drawing weapons and using handcuffs or other restraints is unreasonable in many situations, and determined that the use of a drawn gun pointed at a suspect's head from close range constituted excessive force because the crime under investigation was at most a misdemeanor, the suspect was apparently unarmed and approaching the officers in a peaceful way, and there were no dangerous or exigent circumstances apparent at the time of the detention. In addition to constituting excessive force, there are some circumstances where the use of drawn weapons can transform a Terry stop into an arrest, which must be supported by probable cause. In the 1974 case of United States versus Strict the Ninth Circuit concluded that an armed approach to a surrounded vehicle constituted an arrest, where it was clear that the officers had no legitimate fear for their safety, and only tenuous reasons to believe that the occupants of the car were involved in criminal activity. Applying the Graham factors to this situation, although the underlying criminal offense involved was more serious and involved a firearm, Mr. Kumpian was not holding a weapon, did not appear to pose a threat to anyone, and was completely compliant with Officer Kerziah's orders. Coupled with the fact that Mr. Kumpian clearly did not match the description of the individual alleged to have a firearm, it seems likely that a court would conclude that pointing a firearm at Mr. Kumpian for an extended period of time constituted excessive force, and it would also likely violate the Tempe Police Department's use of force policy. Likewise, if a court determined that Officer Kerziah's use of force transformed the detention into an arrest, it would almost certainly hold that Officer Kerziah did not have the probable cause necessary to arrest Mr. Kumpian through the extended pointing of his firearm. I have somebody on the phone right now with Sean trying to confirm if you're an employee or not. As soon as I verify that, you can go and then you can get whatever information you need. Do you understand that? It's crazy, huh? Hey, can you record this? He steadily got his gun on me and I got my hands up. Steadily I'm recording too. I got my hands up. I know I work here, but he steadily got his gun. 
He's That's fine, just stay back. I got my hands up on the ground. He still got a gun pointed on me. Anybody come Did out? Did he verify there? that somebody by the name of Trey works here? Get out of here, Trey. Yeah, thank you. You can stand by in the lobby if you need all my information. I'll be more than happy to give it to you. Have a great afternoon. Hey, if we have Sean on the line, can you give me any more intel on if this guy exited yet or not? I exited the building to stand on the door and Sean was watching him on video. Yeah, I need at least one additional to come to the lobby and, and uh, meet up with Hoover. And then I need... Stop right there. I've got another one to gumbo. Get your out of here now! I've got one fleeing back inside. Hispanic or white male, approximately 30 years old, black bandana, white t-shirt, gray shorts. Stop right there. Me? Where did he go? Where the did he go? I ain't got nothing to do with that man. Where is he? I ain't got nothing to do with me. No shit. So why is you talking to me like that? God, get the out of the way. I'm not go. Okay, go! Now! While pursuing another suspect who fled after Officer Kurzaya pointed his firearm at him while he was attempting to leave the hotel with his bicycle, Officer Kurzaya screams at an individual in the hallway to tell him where the other individual went, and continues to speak harshly with him when he does not provide the information requested. As we have discussed many times on ATA, citizens generally do not have a duty to assist officers with their investigations, and the individual in the hallway was well within his rights to simply inform Officer Kurzaya he had had nothing to do with the situation. Officer Kurzaya, on the other hand, was required to follow the Tempe Police Department's Code of Conduct, which is contained in Department Order 3.201. The policy states that, quote, police employees shall always conduct themselves both on and off duty in such a manner as to reflect favorably on the department, and that, quote, police employees are expected to conduct their personal and professional lives in such a manner as to avoid adverse reflection upon themselves or the department. It also notes that being, quote, abusive in attitude, language, behavior, or conduct toward the public is considered a so-called violation of procedure, as is speaking, quote, an unprofessional, inappropriate, or offensive remark. It seems likely that Officer Kurzaya's treatment of the individual in the hallway, as well as his conduct in interacting with other members of the public throughout this interaction, violated the Department Code of Conduct. I'm just inside the west entrance. I don't know where the hell he went. He's good! Get him out! Where did he go, Sean? Jesus Christ! The guy with the gun, where the hell did he go? He walked outside. Jesus Christ! Sean just told me that he went back inside. He may have popped out the main entrance. He... Which way did he go? I told you! And why do you have my employee a black male at gunpoint? He's clearly not white! Somebody else go talk to Sean. The manager is explaining that she may have fled out the east entrance now, but he doesn't. Hi. Hi. Uh, my camera can't go on mute, so I'm going to turn it fine. off. As he speaks with another officer outside the hotel, Officer Kurzaya appears to turn off his body camera. It was later reported that the other officers who arrived on the scene completed the investigation, and the armed suspect was never found. The Tempe Police Department launched an internal investigation into Officer Kurzaya's conduct and found that he violated several policies during the interaction. As a result of the investigation, Officer Kurzaya was given a two-week unpaid suspension and placed in an administrative administrative role with the department for at least one year. He was also required to take part in a performance improvement process. In his official response to the department's internal investigation, Officer Kurzaya wrote that, quote, I understand that my actions have caused a tremendous amount of anguish for many different people, and I cannot convey enough how remorseful I am for my actions and the aftermath that so many people have been forced to deal with and continue to deal with to this day. Officer Kurzaya's immediate supervisor, who was also on scene at the hotel, received a 40-hour unpaid suspension. Notably, Officer Kurzaya was also involved in a controversial use of force case in June of 2019, where he deployed a taser on an unarmed man while holding his one-year-old child in his own home. After the Hawthorne Suites incident, the Arizona Peace Officer Standards and Training Board opened an investigation into Officer Kurzaya, and in early 2022, Officer Kurzaya voluntarily and permanently relinquished his Arizona Peace Officer certification without admitting any misconduct conduct or failure.
failure to meet minimum qualifications. According to state rules, Officer Kurzaya will be permanently banned from re-entering law enforcement in Arizona for relinquishing his certification while facing potential disciplinary action. After the encounter, Mr. Kumpian hired prominent civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who also led George Floyd's family's legal team, to represent him. In September of 2020, he filed a $2.5 million notice of claim against the city of Tempe as a result of the incident. And on December 9, 2020, the Tempe City Council unanimously approved a $300,000 settlement agreement that did not include any admission of liability. Overall, Officer Kurzaya gets an F for pointing a firearm at Mr. Kumpian when he in no way matched the description of the suspect and was entirely compliant, and speaking to multiple citizens in a rude and completely unprofessional manner. The way that Officer Kurzaya pointed his firearm at anyone who crossed his path demonstrated a complete disregard for the physical and mental well-being of everyone who happened to be at the hotel during the incident, and a total lack of respect for the potentially life-ending power he wielded by carrying a deadly weapon. Throughout the incident, Officer Kurzaya's actions appeared to be driven by a sense of fear for his own well-being. And while fear is certainly a natural human instinct, effective police officers must be able to conquer their fears and behave responsibly and constitutionally despite feeling afraid. Officer Kurzaya's conduct during this encounter demonstrated that he did not have the temperament necessary to do this, and I believe that relinquishing his peace officer certification was ultimately the right decision. Mr. Kumpian gets an A+. Plus for complying with Officer Kurzaya's orders, respectfully challenging his unreasonable use of force, and taking prompt and effective legal action against Officer Kurzaya. After the incident, Mr. Kumpian explained that in his response to the encounter, he was at least partially motivated by fear that Officer Kurzaya was going to kill someone in the near future. And based on the body camera footage from this incident, this concern was more than justified. I commend Mr. Kumpian for taking action to protect the public from a potentially dangerous officer and would encourage other citizens to learn from his example of challenging police misconduct after the completion of the encounter through the legal system. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.